ladies and gentlemen, this is Just Plain Living, and I'm John Gray. And look over my shoulder. That what shoulder right over there. Oh. No, right over here. Look at look Santa? back there. Santa Claus? Santa Claus is Santa Claus is back. John there. is well, finally moving. Watch out. He's finally moving in <laughs> yeah. that direction of Christmas. Yeah, we're moving into Christmas. We we uh, Good morning, I'm Peggy Burton. Yes. And I'm, and I'm Jim Fuller. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you guys were having a, a really interesting conversation here. I know, and about I, I totally lost it. Pe Peggy <laughs> has gotten some new kind of coffee here. What was it? Mint, oh. something mint. <laughs> Peppermint. Peppermint. Right. Well, but it, the creamer is peppermint. But in the course of that, John got to talking about a buddy he has that drinks, uh, what was it, Kahlua? And Bailey's. Bailey's, Bailey's and Irish coffee cream. In Bailey's the, in the real, the, real. In the morning. Yeah. And Peggy said some, w w well, cream de menthe was good? Or? Well, there's several things that are good, but I think in the morning it's a little early, don't you think? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, depends on either. what you have to do, not, I guess. Not at all. Uh, John and I had a friend one time that when we were drinking coffee before we went to work at 8 o'clock, He's drinking Budweiser. He's having a beer. And so, so. Uh, I mean, that was just what he did, you know. How's that working out for him? <laughs> Where is he now? Well, bless his heart, he's not with us anymore. Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, that's, like, uh, that's probably the same friend of ours that had, uh, right after Thanksgiving, he would mix up uh, uh, eggnog. Eggnog by the gallon and he always had a gallon with him wherever he went <laughs> oh my gosh. keep in a cooler in the back of his car and he was a sales type guy you know and they were all that was that was a long that's a pretty good while back when a lot of times meetings involved having drinks yeah and, right and that's how that and was. you'd have drinks when you go to lunch yes. as well so and he he stayed he stayed about right here he cruised all the way from Thanksgiving <laughs> till about Valentine's, and then he quit, he'd get the eggnog out of his car. Oh, good grief. Good he grief. called me up one night, and um, he was quite the character, and he called me up one night and said, you know, I've had this little accident. Can you come and pick me up? And he told me where he was, and we lived in Atlanta. And when I get there, his car is upside down in a ditch. And he's on the bottom of the car walking and around. He's, he's walking around, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I think we may need to call the police here. And get, you know, we, you guys knew we, some weird people, didn't you? We did. You knew. We did. Some interesting life, life, people. Life was good life then. Life was good. good. Life was good then because we were talking a moment ago about uh, having drinks at lunch was quite common. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I guess it was a joke or something, but one time our supervisor, sent us a memo down and said, if you guys are going to drink at lunch, please drink whiskey or something instead of vodka so people will know that you're drunk and not just crazy. <laughs> so, and he didn't fire you? <laughs> no, that's just what I'm saying. It was quite I can't common, believe you guys you know. had a job. <laughs> you know. We've course, always at, had at, some crazy At 21 or 2, job. that yeah. makes perfect sense how you're living then, you know. Did you get all this from the flower shop? Flower shop. shop. We really want to thank the them. You know, if you if you have some decorating needs yet uh, for the holiday season, but uh, all the time, I mean, they have beautiful things down there. It's Janie and Kathy and and uh, Julie and Tommy, and they just the Christmas trees. There's and Christmas Santa trees Claus and, and Santa Claus and a deer and deer, and they have one of the things they have. Of course, they have jewelry and they have other things like that. And of course, they're the uh, supreme florist. Uh, but one thing I've always enjoyed about the flower shop is they have neat containers down there. Oh, yeah. They have beautiful containers. You know, if you need a flower, containers. yeah, the, uh, interesting stuff, pottery type stuff. And, uh, but they, they're on Blackwell Street, and they're our buds, and they've helped us throughout and the years to, uh, to decorate everything from telethons to uh, anything else we've ever wanted to do. You know, they've, they've been right there. It's pretty scary when you think about this, but, and John has mentioned it a couple of times this year, but this is... Uh, 2012 so we're just completing our 20th year 20th year 20th year yeah as a as a broadcasting company which is congratulations kind of scary. Viable, and you, you guys are still alive still viable, standing yeah. still walking who would have thought <laughs> viable tax paying business taking yeah taking no funds from anyone but the people who are generous enough to advertise with us like Greg Heineke's out here today 
from Bell Buckle and you know folks like that. I know, and I'm excited who about support Mallory's us. on the show today. You Mallory know, Smith. and Greg has brought the, uh, one of my favorite people here today, uh, uh, Valerie. And are you? Is there any way you think she could sing "Bring Yourself Home for Christmas" on the show today? I don't know whether she's going to do that you today know. or not. She's a little <laughs> oh, Valerie. Valerie. Uh, uh, Valerie yet. in in her past life. Uh, <laughs> was and I guess I guess it's sort of like a marine. You're once a marine, always, always a, a marine. marine. Once a teacher, always a teacher. And Valerie was a, a was a teacher. grade school teacher and and taught music. And what happened up north this past week has no, I is, is really yes, upsetting. Absolutely. And she she was she told me this morning. She said, "Well, I shouldn't have watched the news before." Before well, I came, because I just can't. It's tragic, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we could speculate forever and forever why, what, where. It can happen anywhere. It can happen here in Tullahoma. I'm not sure there's any way to stop. You know, a and, and not watching they, the news might have been yeah. a good plan because honestly, today I didn't because because you know we're expected to come here and be up about everything yeah. and uh, you yeah. know and certainly that's that's one of the. Most what I wish is I wish that we'd never know the name of the shooter, but we would remember the names of those precious children yes. that have changed the lives of and the they, town and forever. And they're, they're uh, it's, it's, gone, it's gone way out there. I was watching just a minute ago, and they were talking about The Voice. Which is last night? I think they had the, they're down to three, mm -hmm. and that's that's probably one of the biggest shows on TV now. And they and opened with they Hallelujah. opened with Hallelujah, and each one of the cast and the people who have been on this year's show had a name of one of the children. Yeah, uh, that was Great. beautiful. And did that, and uh, Chris Johnson wrote the name of the Titan, which. That's something to celebrate. The Titans won a ball game. The Titans won last possible? night. Yeah. Well, that's it's good. possible because the Jets must be the most horrible ball team in the John, NFL. That was John's comment when he came in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he was obviously shocked that the Titans number one won. But the uh, Jets must be bad. God, they're <laughs> terrible. So, uh, but Chris Johnson had we'll a... We'll get cards and letters about that if you're our Titan <laughs> yeah, fan. Yeah. So we, we apologize. Well, we'll apologize the, Titans, yeah, starts. the Titans have, have got Tom Moore. Who was the who was Peyton Manning's offensive coordinator right. at Indianapolis, and he's down there helping and gotten back into it, and uh, they're 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 going to make strides. And, and uh, uh, Chris Johnson ran a 94-yard touchdown last night, which is the second longest in uh, in Monday Night Football history. So uh, it's good. You know, they they won. Good for that, them. That it. Y'all have to excuse me if I doze off. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this always leaves Peggy when we go to the, the sports thing. Tennessee's got a new football coach, uh, that, which football actually coach. happened a week ago. We didn't talk about it last week. But I the, actually knew that. And are they happy with him? Well, I imagine they're paying him $3 million a year. <laughs> I hope they're happy. Uh, with, I imagine course, he's happy. Of course, that remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, they've got he a certainly has the, the credentials. Coach. You know, they've the got a lot. They've got a lot to live up to, and John, I'm through. Go, oh, you're done. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. John and John and I found out something really interesting this past weekend. We had a little get together, or our accountant had a little get together at her office, and John found and that I, you had no money. John and I were both <laughs> there, and and uh, uh, we found that Doctor Lawson, Ed Lawson, our chiro chiropractic guest, who right. is a regular guest here, that he can sing. Well, you know, he's wanted to have lessons, and did I you think bring that some of that? We, did you, you know, bring some? I, I don't think I did, unless it was on the disc they gave me with the news clips on it. But, but I, I should have, and I asked for it, but I'm not sure that I have it on that disc. I'm not so. surprised. He, he and I sang "Man of Constant Sorrow." Oh my gosh! And, uh, <laughs> and he <laughs> has that before. hillbilly that shuffle <laughs> down. I mean, it was a sight. You know, and another great thing, and John and I have been out of the karaoke business now for five years, but I heard John sing uh, Georgia on the Mind. First time I've heard it in forever, I loved it, and he, I thought he did a great I job. I love Georgia Absolutely. on the Mind, Absolutely. yeah. So, That's one just of my favorites. I sang, I sang one, too, that uh, I, I rediscovered, I didn't rediscover, but I stumbled upon uh, Lyle Lovett the other day. I was on the, oh, I'm crazy oh, yeah, about Lyle Lovett. Song. Uh, she ain't uh, she ain't a lady. She's my wife. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but Lyle is just way out there, and uh, he's got he's got he's I put great. Him up he's there a in great the category talent. With Katie Lang, they're yeah, uh, you yeah. know they're unique 
individuals. Uh, untouchable. Mm -hmm. Nashville couldn't handle either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> really, couldn't handle either one of them. Who was it Lyle Love that got married to? Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts, Julia Roberts that's yeah. right, yeah, okay. The girl with the smile that goes all the way across her face. Uh, yes, ma'am. A lot of teeth. A lot of teeth, a lot Great of... Great actress. A uh, lot of movies, a lot of money. Yeah. We've got a lot going on in this town this week. First Baptist opens their nativity Yes, this they week. do. And that's always fun, fun, fun. And we've had choir concerts. Oh, wow, and, yeah, some really and, good ones. And, uh, and Old Town Christmas. Old Town and we've Scroll. had lots of stuff going on. And there, there's going to be, we're going to bring you a lot of that on today's show. Also on today's show, we have Chief Paul Blackwell here, and, and he has a couple of things he wants to talk about, about uh, maybe uh, winter driving and how, how to get ready. Because guess what? It's going to be 60-something degrees tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Really? But it's not going to last forever. I know, I no. know. We better yeah. enjoy it while it'll, we can. It'll come a time when... Uh, when we'll need to think about sleet and slush and slick that. roads and black ice and all those things. And I think Chief's got a few suggestions. Chief about Blackwell was at our band thing Saturday night. And I was so happy to see him and the mayor and their beautiful wives. Jim's at Ann's church. Mm -hmm. We did a Christmas banquet there and it was fun. Did they dance? I think they thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they thought about yeah. it. Well, I tell you what I want to do right quick while we're while we're here is uh, I, I have film from this, but I didn't have time to, to edit it last night. But last night was the Tullahoma High School football banquet uh, held at held at uh, uh, Kings Cross Church, uh, as it is every year, and celebrating the 2012 football season. And Coach John Olive and the quarterback club and all those people did a great job of putting that on. And uh, we'll probably go a little bit more than that, but we got all kinds of time today. So, uh, so, so what, what, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, give a couple of the special awards. The Ken McMurtry Booster Award this year, and, and that's given in honor of Ken McMurtry, who was one of those sideline coaches. Yeah. Yeah, one of the guys whose son was a player, but when his son quit, uh, finished playing. He, was he kept there. he kept showing up and bringing cold drinks and stuff. This year that went to Ricky Christie, and who has uh, helped with the football program for years, and then had some health problems and came back. Uh, the players' awards and special teams award was the kicker Cody Morton. The uh, defensive line was Dalton Cox. And these these are voted on by the players themselves so that's for, from their teammates, of. which is something really to be proud of. Offensive line was Kelton Hickerson. Uh, defense, let's see, defensive skill player was Zane Price. Offensive skill player was Justin Brown. And then offensive uh, MVP was Trey Burks. And defensive MVP was Joseph London. And you know these uh, you just can't say enough about a lot of these kids because as coach Olive said when this season started after about the third game they didn't know whether they'd win a ball game or not mm -hmm. maybe yeah. two and they ended up playing into the second round of the playoffs and it was it was because really. of uh, the the hard work that these young people did uh, we have the uh, Lions Club Award was Trey Burks won that. The Frank Mullins Award was so close there was one vote, and and some of these other these other ones here they have players vote, coaches vote, and then they have other people in the community that, that vote on these things too. To where it's not, yeah, you know, well that's your favorite, that's the mm -hmm. coach's favorite or whatever. There are other people involved. Trey Burks was the Lions Club winner. Frank Mullins Award was one vote. And so it was given, uh, two of them were given uh, to Dalton Cox and to Zane Price because they just Very both nice. contributed so mm -hmm. much. Uh, the Jason Few Award, which is given in memory of Jason Few, who was a football player. And, and it, like Coach Olive said, it's uh, not about talking the talk, it's about walking, walking the walk, the walk. And, and being a great ball player and a great person and having. Uh, Having Christ in your life, because that's what Jason Few was all about, and rightfully so, Caleb Olive won that award. Very and, nice. And very, very fine young man. The Tullahoma Radio Wildcat Award was Trevor Denny. The Coaches Achievement Award was Justin Brown, 
who found out four or five weeks before the season that he was going to be the quarterback and hadn't played quarterback since he was eight years old. Wow. And, and did a great job. Did a, did a, job. Did a yeah. one. Yeah. I tell you how good a job he did. Uh, the coaches, uh, the coaches, regional coaches, all coaches awards. Uh, the region players were Joe London, Zach Price, uh, Kelton Higgerson, and Justin Brown. And so that's that's how that what went last night. It was a great it was a great season. They fine young men. It's always a pleasure to uh, to be involved with the Tullahoma Wildcat football program. It is a stellar program in, in the state of Tennessee and respected by one and all. Uh, that's why it's so hard sometimes to find people to play because they they don't like hard coming to, here to play. To live up to the They don't like coming here and getting set. beat. They don't like coming yeah. here and getting beat because you never know what's going to happen but Coach Olive and his staff find a way to win ball games with whoever they have there. Maybe they need to go to the Jets. <laughs> Y'all are real oh, down on the Jets today. No, the Jets have already flown back to New York. They so yes. okay. yeah. they, and the chances of them seeing this show are pretty slim. So. Pretty slim. Oh, yeah. you know chances of them in? making the playoffs are <laughs> over. Are yeah. over. Yeah. Are over. But this show's not over. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back with some more fun on just plain living the week before Christmas edition. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Times have changed since Traders Bank first opened our doors in 1889. Back then, online banking meant people were waiting ahead of you. And technology? The word hadn't even been invented yet. Even though banking has transformed over the years, at Traders, one thing has never changed. Friendly smiles, a neighborly hello, and a sincere appreciation for our customers. When a Traders employee says, you're welcome, you are, and you always will be. Traders Bank, you're welcome. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. These are the children who had no chance. They're known as Brazil's street kids. They wander the streets dying by the thousands from drugs, AIDS, and bullets. Most of them have been abandoned, left to survive on their own. These children needed a place to go. I had to do something. So I brought it up at Rotary. People heard about what we were doing and asked how they could help. Together, we raised funds to give them a home and open the school. They're learning a trade. Now hundreds of kids have a family and a future. They're contributing to the community because Rotary believes in making things better for everyone. Rotary is making a difference right now. They have hope. Rotary gives people an opportunity to help. And here we are back, folks, and it's Christmas time, and there's no place better to celebrate it and go find out about it than Bell Buckle, Tennessee. And we have two of the the prime suspects of fun in Bell Buckle with us this morning, and that's Valerie Smith and Jay Gregory. Ho, ho. Hello, everybody. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. What are you doing? I'm just sitting here talking to you. <laughs> you are great. You are Christmas up. Look at all those jewels around your neck. And well, everything. you know, this is my one Christmas shirt I get out every year. <laughs> it's called Christmas camouflage. My family knows just, when it's the holiday. You can't see her till she moves, and uh, all the yeah. I go to the very back of the there. closet, yeah. and I say, "There's my Christmas shirt." <laughs> After Christmas, I just wash it and hang it back up. So, what's up with you, girl? Well, um, you know, I'll be going to South Dakota. I call it the Great Tundra <laughs> during the holidays. And uh, my family, uh, my family's from Missouri, and then my husband's family from South Dakota. Last year we hit a deer, <laughs> so I'm hoping that we're not going to. Did gonna you eat. take it roadkill? No, mean? we didn't. We, it was so dark, we didn't know where he went. And we, we, we were in a minivan, so when, I don't know, we would have had to really figure out how to bungee that thing to the roof. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they just used it for a hood ornament for a while. <laughs> But it sure did cause a lot of damage to the... They do. Yeah. You know, they do. But I, I've been doing a lot of benefit concerts, 
and um, and so I'm all done with those and everything. And so I had a really busy holiday season and stuff. So things have kind of slowed down, but have it has not slowed down in Bell Buckle. Nothing slows down in Bell Buckle. Ever. 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 There's always something going on, it, you know, in the town itself. Already had our old-fashioned Christmas, which was great. Um, a lot of carolers and lights and just Santa Claus, Santa Claus, buggy rides, a petting zoo. My daughter. It was it was a child's heaven there. So you had a good time. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but there's more that's going to happen during the holiday season. Um, I think the first thing is is uh, there's going to be a New Year's Eve bash. On the twenty, on the thirty-first of December. No, so actually, that. the first thing is Rhonda Vincent. Oh my gosh, yes. that's right. Uh, the one of the reigning female Rhonda bluegrass. Rhonda Vincent. Yes. You, you got Rhonda Vincent coming to Belmont. At yes, the we do. at the hall uh, at the banquet hall, she called Greg one day in the office and said that she wanted to sing at the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall on December thirty-first and bring the Martha White bus. And we were, we're, we've been very excited about Where that. Where you bake right? <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Martha White. She's the reigning um, female bluegrass vocalist at the International Bluegrass Music Association. Uh, uh, of course, along with Dylan Bradley. But Rhonda, for a long time, held that title. Still holds the Martha White title. And um, is we're excited to have her come to Bell Buckle, Tennessee. And uh, it's her first time at the Banquet Hall. She puts on a great show. I've seen it several times. Um, and I think people, uh, they just need to get on the phone because the seats are just filling up so so quickly. What, what, what's going to be involved, Greg, in, in that show with her? Is there going to be, is there going to be dinner? Yes. Uh, well, we're going to have uh, a meal available for those that just want to come out for the music. Uh, it's it's fifteen dollars just to get in and see Rhonda's show. She's going to do two sets that night. Uh, if you want to eat, I'm going to have a couple of choices of meals for ten dollars. That includes drink, dessert, you know. Uh, so it's going to be a nice meal for 10 bucks for those that want to eat and see the show. I split it up a little bit because some people just want to come for the music. And uh, she's going to do the two shows that evening, which is Friday evening. And then Saturday, she's going to do our little radio show at the Bell Buckle Cafe. She wanted to do it, uh, the J. Gregory Jamboree on WLIJ, uh, 1580 AM. You can listen to that on Saturday. And then Saturday night, Ron is going to be performing at the Grand Old Opry. Uh, and she just wanted to come to Bell Buckle to kind of work the band out a little bit. And of course, we've known Rhonda for a lot of years. Valerie's performed on the same stage with Rhonda dozens and dozens of times around the country. You know, it's for the last, what, 18 years, I guess. And, not that uh, long. I'm not that and, old. Uh, <laughs> Hey. Uh, but yeah, give, give a girl a brunch. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great. She's older than she looks, folks. I'm sorry, but <laughs> no. Let's just not kidding. talk about just age because we'll just start kidding. talking about yours. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but but Ron is gonna do a wonderful show there, and she's gonna be doing a. It's almost like this warm up before the Grand Old Opry Saturday night. So y'all come out to the. Bell Buckle Banquet Hall. It's across the street from the cafe. Uh, you'll find it. All the cars in the bigger building. If you get lost in Bell Buckle, uh, don't don't come. Follow the railroad tracks yeah, and you'll find. You got to. You can find everything. It's a, just a very little town. And like I said, if you miss, if you miss the uh, bluegrass concert of Rhonda Vincent. Um, just make sure you come. Oh, then they're doing something totally opposite. It's a rock and roll event <laughs> from a, a group called Raisin Cane. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they're going to be at the banquet hall on, um, for our New Year's Eve bash, December 31st. And I've been to a, a Bell Buckle New Year's Eve bash, and there's there's nothing like it. I mean, everybody just has a wonderful time and dances and uh, Greg's going to uh, pull out the stops on his buffet. It's going to be one of the biggest buffets. that, And for the entire package to bring in the New Year's, I mean, we're talking the hats and the little whistles and the food and the dancing and the band. It's $31, but actually that is very, very cheap for an entire evening for New Year's Do Eve. Do you have a breakfast 
afterwards. <laughs> well, well, we're going to have. Well, uh, I'm just curious because some people do that. And some we used to right. do that at the Legion when we had a we, we are going to have some foods there. I haven't determined exactly which ones at midnight, but we'll have some things to eat. I don't know uh, if it'll be a breakfast per se yet. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I just haven't put that part of the menu yeah. together. Nobody but, will starve. But we'll have no. so much no. food there. <laughs> yes, everybody will be be very well taken care of. There's a lot of reservations coming in on both these events right now. So I would suggest to get your reservations in. I think both of them are going to be quite filled up. And we'd hate to see you miss it because it's just really good entertainment and a good evening. And it's really quite inexpensive for a whole evening out with food and entertainment and everything you can't go wrong and then if they right, miss so that there's me, gonna be valentine's what if they miss that there's gonna be valentine's so. i, I want to get this straight because i'm confused and so maybe they're confused <laughs> rhonda vinson is first yes and, and 28th and of december the 28th friday that's night not what i think you said the 31st no, no that's new year's that's new year's bash. bash okay but i just I, I, I understood 31st, so I want to make sure they understand. Yes. The, it's, it's the Friday night, the 28th, 28th yes. is Ron Vincent, yes. and then three days later is the New Year's Eve on yes. the 31st. Yes, with Raising exactly. Cane. Raising exactly. Cane. And if they all really want to get it straight, they can go to the website, the bellbucklebanquethall.com. Bellbucklebanquethall.com. And, the, and all of our events are on there and up to date. And... Um, you know, uh, that's a good place to always go and make sure uh, they sign up for our newsletter, Chat and Chew, because we're constantly sending out well, is information. Chat and Chew, is it back up and chewing and chatting? Yes. Because I know I went to Chat and Chew here about two or three, four weeks ago, and there was a... We had some malware. Somebody put some malware on some of our sites there, and we we finally chat and chewed all the way through that and, and uh, everything's up and, and running again and but I want to I want to mention why we have the time real quick uh, Miss Peggy Burton of course who you know quite well yeah she's sitting uh -huh. right over there uh, she's coming with her group uh, and South her Jackson band. Street Band yes yes on Valentine's but it'll be Saturday and it won't be Valentine's Day it's gonna be Saturday the 16th, 16th. Okay, so instead of like, I think Valentine's Day falls on a Thursday. Thursday. But we felt that most people wouldn't want to celebrate on a Thursday evening, so we're going to do it on a Saturday evening. We're going to have some fabulous food and a fabulous time, and we'll have a little dance floor out there, too, so if anybody wants to come down and do some dancing and having a good time. Now, Peggy, that bunch that follows Peggy, they like to dance. I heard they're wild. They're, they're, they're good. Wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're looking forward to that. I, I'm excited to have uh, how many members in that band 19 you know <laughs> it's Peggy's big it's this, big this band. is going to be the biggest group that we've ever had in there and I'm excited about bringing a big band in there to do all that different types of music and everything and I, I think it's going to be a, a very exciting evening and of course the the banquet hall will be decorated up quite nice the food will be fantastic and, and it's another event that we can handle in the winter time when there's absolutely nothing to do anyway right so Let's party and have a good time. That's right. That's right. You know when we when we uh, when we ran the Legion, uh, that was one of our bigger events was the Valentine's mm -hmm. Night Dance. And Fuller and I, we had a we had that place packed, and we always had good music and a good a good meal. And you know, people are people. You don't you don't you like to have to cook on Valentine's Night? No. You want to take her out somewhere <laughs> nice and. And there's, you know, there's a, there's only so many places that that do that type of stuff. Yes. And uh, it's funny. Uh, I I like the the uh, mummy movies. The ones, the the new ones that came out. There was three of them. Well, at the end of the third one, they're in Cairo after they killed the mummy and all of that, and they're in a dance club with the small tables and a, and a band playing that type of music and a mm -hmm. Dolly Holiday type singer up there. And they're all dressed and they've got their shirts and ties on and the women are in evening gowns and they're, you know, they're eating meal and, and people on the dance floor. And it's a dinner dance club and you just don't see that kind of stuff anymore. And right. I, think, I think we're missing out well, I'd like in to our take society. That. 
I'd like to take that, that point, that, John. That, that event like that available for folks. I'd like to take that point and invite the younger people to come out and see music that I guess we kind of more grew up with, but it's it's a very interesting music. It's wonderful music. So you young folks come out and enjoy something a little bit different and go back into the heritage a little bit of of the music. And uh, who knows? We might be able to get uh, Valerie up there to sing a song with the band, maybe an old uh, Billy Holiday song or something. You know, she she belts those out quite nice. So you, n you never know. We might talk her into it. <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Something else that goes on down. I want to make before we go any further. I want to make sure that the real mainstay, the the real lynch post behind all of this that keeps all of this working and functioning properly and everybody fed tremendously, Jeanette, is she okay? No, Jeanette put all my stuff out on the porch this morning and uh, <laughs> and I think uh, she's either moving or I'm, no, she's, she's doing fine. She's absolutely... Uh, you just had a wedding anniversary. She will be there, yeah, I think, uh, 40, How many years? 44 years. Good for you. And yeah. you were talking about my age? Well, <laughs> then that's, that's Jeanette, that's Greg's, that's Greg's wife, and uh -huh. the one that's the, the wheels behind the Bell Buckle Cafe, and, <laughs> and if, if all were known, probably the banquet hall as well. Although you, you, you're quite a cook, quite a chef yourself. Mm. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that acknowledgement, uh, John. Well, <laughs> I can tell. I can tell you, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate your support of us and what we do uh, here on Channel Six, and and hope and know that we have we have uh, tried our hardest to to get your message out, and I think we have. Uh, your banquets that you're having at the first of every month mm -hmm. are are doing great, and yes. uh, just keep on coming, folks. This bunch right here knows how to have fun. They're going to make sure you do as well. And look for this one right here, new music from her. You ought to have some new music coming out when? Oh, Maybe well, this year or sometime? Yeah, 2013. I'm, I'm kind of a slow worker and... Uh, I'll help you. I'm, <laughs> I will, you know, I'm on iTunes and Amazon and all those places and I may be releasing some singles and things like that and... Because um, you're not Lisa. Well, I, that's one of the songs. I also got it. And <laughs> I got a few more that's in the pocket and... Um, going to also be working on the volume two of Blame It on the Bluegrass with the Owensboro Bluegrass Museum. And I uh, just got done talking to Jesse McReynolds um, about being a part of that um, that project because that's that's supposed to be a project of history yeah. and our American <laughs> heritage of, of, of bluegrass. And so looking forward to that and just uh, doing what I do. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate y'all very much. Merry Appreciate Christmas it. to you. Appreciate y'all. Uh, from Bell Buckle to all of you folks out there, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We'll be right back yep. after these Merry messages. Christmas. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay them a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Get your news first, fast, and free with your News Leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with News Leader on Channel 6, your local information network. When you see the sign, The Main Event, take a close look inside at a hair studio that offers services by some of the best master stylists in Middle Tennessee. These stylists offer a list of services that compete with large city salons, from trendy cuts for men, women, and children, to the latest color techniques, including highlights and bold color accents. 
Other services offered include permanent hair weaving and relaxing to formal hairstyle for that special occasion. You can also give yourself a very special treat with a full makeover including full body waxing. For your convenience, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until the last client leaves happy. Call and make your appointment at 931-571-8682 or stop by our Telehoma location at 207 North Jackson Street. Pay for yourself at the main event today. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. Welcome back. I hope you were around last Tuesday to be a part of Old Town Christmas Stroll that's been going on for several years in Tullahoma. And today we have some film from St. Barnabas Church and the First Baptist Church. And maybe next week we'll show some other events. So let's roll the tape. <laughs>
holiday season is upon us, and for all of your banking needs, look no further than Citizens Tri-County Bank. All of us at Citizens Tri-County Bank want to wish you and your families a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Citizens Tri-County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. This facility was built literally on the international dateline to bring charter customers tomorrow's technology first. Like Charter Internet, which was just made faster again. With speeds up to 100 megs, you can download a movie in two minutes. The number one internet service provider in the nation. Click. Fogelman, good luck with the presentation tomorrow. Already nailed it. Get Charter Internet Express for only $19.99 a month. Jay Gregory invites you to spend part of your holiday season in Bell Buckle this year. The merchants at Southern Charm make gift buying easy, offering Jay Jordan's quality clothing and other designer fashions, pad rags, silly cow chocolate, shabby chic homemade distressed furniture, antiques, jellies, jams, and a gourmet food line from the world famous Bell Buckle Cafe. And speaking of the Bell Buckle Cafe, make sure you stop by and enjoy some of Tennessee's best home style cooking. If over some pork or a great dessert, you think of your upcoming event, go see Martha at the Bell Buckle Banquet and Recital Hall. Wedding, banquet, company party, business meeting, or just a group of friends getting together to have some fun. Martha can help you set a menu, decide on decorations, and ensure your event is successfully delivered in a big town way with small town charm. Jay Gregory has given you an invitation, so visit Southern Charm, the Bell Buckle Cafe, and the Bell Buckle Banquet Hall this holiday season. Visit Bell Buckle. Give yourself a gift. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're pleased to have joining us on the set now Chief Paul Blackwell from the Tullahoma Police Department, who's here today to tell us a little bit about uh, what John was mentioning in the opening here. Of course, uh, uh, it, the weather's pretty nice out there today as we film this, but uh, uh, we're going to get some bad weather, and people need to be prepared for that, did they not, Paul? I, I agree, and listening to, to the earlier segment, uh, that is so true. Today's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Listening to some of the weather last night, they kind of hint that some cold weather may be moving in. I kind of refer to it as roller coaster. Yeah, the temperature is. is playing a roller coaster with us, uh, and we could wake up one morning and say it's cold, mm -hmm. and the cold's going to be here for, for the next few months. Mm -hmm. uh, and just like anything else, we try to be prepared for. Are you prepared for driving? Right. In the in the winter time, of course, driving in the winter, and driving in the summer, are very much different. Uh, so what we've tried to do here uh, recently is just put some tips out to the drivers and say, hey, think about it. The weather's nice right now. You can still get out and work with your car, clean your car up. And now's a good time to, uh, one, inspect your car mm -hmm. and make sure that it's ready for winter weather. And when I say inspect it, uh, obviously it gets darker early, so make sure all your lights work, mm -hmm. front and back lights. Uh, it is a requirement that you have two working headlights on your vehicle and two working tail lights on your vehicle. Very important, of course, in inclement weather, you want people to be able to see you and you want to see the other vehicle. Uh, so just start at the front of your car and work your way back. So you, you've already looked at your lights, open the hood, check all your fluids. Do you have antifreeze? Is your battery, if it's the type you put water in, is it full, uh, oil levels? Everything under your hood that you can check that that might impact how your car operates. So once you move from the hood, then go to the windshield. Your windshield wipers, are they in good condition? That can be a big problem when it starts We're, snowing. Exactly, the windshield wipers, they, they may seem like we only have them when we need them, but like you say, when the snow or it rains or just when you get up in the morning, those windshield wipers need to clean the window off. Mm -hmm. So you wanna look to make sure it's not torn, uh, they're not rotten, because obviously over the course of time, that rubber can rot. So just test it and turn your wipers on, get your windshield wet, and see that it clearly removes it. If it streaks it, it's probably time to replace it. Yeah, and that can be another problem as well, because it, especially at night, as you mentioned, if you're not getting that windshield clean, then lights from other vehicles tend to glare off of that, and then you can't see. Right, very well, and, so. and you get very similar to the snowflake effect, where you get uh -huh. a lot of sparkle, and so so it's a very much needed piece of equipment on your vehicle. Um, so the windshield's taken care of. Let's move inside the vehicle. Does your heater work? 
Does the defroster work? Uh, you know, all of that type stuff inside your car, your comfort mm -hmm. things. Um, then move to your trunk. Do you have the safety equipment or emergency equipment you ought to have with you? And we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, and so by doing that, you check your vehicle. And then very last are your tires. People sometimes neglect the, the tires. Do they have good tread? Are they inflated properly? Uh, you know, the inflation is very important because of the way the car handles. So, it's, so you check all of that stuff and you can probably feel pretty comfortable that from a mechanical standpoint, your vehicle is ready for the winter. Mm -hmm. um, what about emergency equipment? Uh, you know, you hate to think about it, but we, we hear about emergency kits for foul weather, emergency kits for uh, when you go camping, first aid kits, everything. Your vehicle ought to have that emergency kit as well, uh, especially in winter. So what do we talk about in emergency? A blanket, uh, jumper cables, flashlights, a couple bottles of water, and then some type of snack that's, that's wrapped granola bars, uh, candy bars, something that can stay in there for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, your cell phone charger that plugs into your cigarette lighter, is it in your vehicle? Uh, and of course we do this in the event you have a breakdown and you're stranded for any amount of time either on the side of the road, in a ditch. I mean, we hear that at, on the news often of someone going into a ditch and not being found for days, things right. of this nature. Exactly. As the weather gets bad, we hear of cars getting stranded for days somewhere. So those are important things to have in your car with you that might help you sustain a short period of time while mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're trying to wait for some help. One of the key things that we don't want people to forget is if you are stranded, say in a ditch or in a mud pile or something of that, uh, very crucial and, and probably life-threatening is your exhaust system. Make sure that exhaust system's not plugged up in some fashion. You're not in a snow bank, you're not in a mud hole, uh, and you're turning your car on for comfort. Those exhaust emissions make their way into your car, and carbon monoxide, which they call the silent killer, mm -hmm. could very well um, prove fatal. So you, you really probably need to, if you're in a uh, get stuck in the snow bank, you probably really need to get out and make sure that... that, that make that sure and, and or the other, if, if you can't get out, you still roll your window down some so right. that you have a flow of fresh air. Right. Uh, carbon monoxide, you don't know when it's affecting you. Mm -hmm. It just basically makes you go to sleep. And, and of course, like I say, the, the result is often fatal. Mm -hmm. So that's very important that you make sure your exhaust is not clogged. Even when you're driving down the road, it's not a it's not bad to have your window cracked a little bit because you don't know you may have an exhaust leak mm -hmm. that's making its way into your car and I can say from first-hand experience having dealt with that years ago a man in the winter time was driving and he was reported being DUI because he was all over the road right and when we finally caught up to him it was a case that he was almost unconscious from the fact that his car was sealed up mm -hmm. he had a small leak in the exhaust system and those fumes were filling the car, and he was he was just about to go unconscious. Mm -hmm. uh, so even in the winter time, keep your window cracked a little bit for some fresh air movement. Now we talk about driving. Driving's not the same in the summer, like we said. Uh, you can't drive as fast. You've got to increase your distance between vehicles. There's generally what they call a three-second rule. Uh, if you're following somebody and you pinpoint uh, a location ahead of you, it should take three seconds from the time the vehicle in front of you reach that point till you reach it. Mm -hmm. That's in the summertime. That's in good conditions. <clears throat> Imagine uh, when the roads are slick, the black ice, that distance and that time has to increase greatly. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you leave sufficient time to uh, stop if, if that car in front of you has to stop. I think that's the first time I've ever heard that. So, so you, you pick out an object and, and, and see if it takes you at least three seconds after the other car yeah. passes. And it's you get, a bridge. Yeah. Take a bridge. Yeah. That car in front of you, when it hits that bridge, then you count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and you should then reach that bridge. Mm -hmm. If it's faster than that, you're following them too closely. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, like I say, add in the bad weather that distance needs to greatly increase. 
uh, some of our younger drivers that aren't real experienced, and maybe I shouldn't say younger because there seems to be if, if all ages that when you're driving don't don't slam on your brakes because obviously slamming on your brakes is just going to put you into a slide. Right. You're just going to slide. So the uh, the recommended method is to pump your brakes. Pumping the brakes allows the car to get some traction, and of course with the new ABS brakes, right. That that's a key element of it is pumping it. Uh, and pumping it allows you to keep control of your car at the same time allowing the brakes to do their job and to bring the vehicle to either a stop or to slow it down. Um, basic driving tips that probably each parent should go over with their young people because they, they're usually our inexperienced drivers and, and have not uh, well, experienced that much winter weather. Right. Uh, so it, they need to be shown and sometimes, I don't know if I'd say I recommend it or not, but it's sometimes kind of a good lesson to take them to an empty parking lot that has no street poles or mm -hmm. any obstacles and show them just how quickly that car loses control mm -hmm. by either slightly turning your wheel or hitting your brakes. Like I say, I, you know, I'm not saying I recommend that. If you can find the right place to do that, where there's, like I say, no obstructions where you're liable to hit your car or tear your car up, it's good to let someone see the dynamics exactly. of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, so probably the very last thing is be defensive. Mm -hmm. Be cautious. Uh, the driving is so much different and uh, we just want people, we, see, we tend to see our accidents increase in the winter mm -hmm. because some of the very things we're saying. People fail to slow down, they fail to increase their stopping distance, uh, they think they can still drive in the same fashion they drove in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And and the result are increased motor vehicle accidents. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. You know, and, and, and you, uh, the Tullahoma Police Department, and you and Winston Brooks, I know, uh, ha have, have really tried to c communicate with people uh, to tell them these and other things that are important to them. One of the things I saw, uh, uh, an email, I, I guess, from your office that said, mentioned that one of the things you should have in your tr uh, trunk is cat litter. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're going to do what with that? Well, and I failed to mention that as part of your safety equ emergency equipment, but cat litter or sand are, are good for allowing your vehicle to get traction. So if you're stuck somewhere where you can't get good traction, you pour that cat litter, you pour that sand down, uh -huh. and it gives that drive wheel, which wheel controls the car, right. a little bit of traction that may be able to get you out of that ditch, get you going on the road, get you back on your path. Uh, so it's, you know, just carry a bag in with you. Who would have thought, yeah. you know? And, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of other things. Of course, chains. Mm -hmm. You know, people uh, in, in really low, bad locations use the chains on their car. Uh -huh. We don't really recommend that here because our weather it may be snowy one day and by afternoon the snow's gone. Right. If you got chains on your car, you're tearing up the road. Mm -hmm. There is a state law about having those things that tear the road up if there's no need for them then right they need to come off um, studded tires same thing uh, you know the city has a complement of studded tires but again we don't put them on our vehicles because in a matter of two hours it could be clear then we got to go change those studded tires out again so, mm -hmm. because you can't drive those on the road mm -hmm. uh, that there's there's just a lot of things that go into winter driving uh, but so emergency vehicles police cars and such uh, do have uh, the availability of getting uh, something to let them move. To, to let us maneuver a little bit more. It's very rarely used because, again, uh, the way our weather patterns are, it could be snow on the morning, and as we've seen, by noontime, it's it's clear. Right. And, and so we're just running back and forth changing tires out, but we do have that ability. Unbelievable. And, and one of the last things that, and I've been victim of it, and, and probably everybody that, your windshield wipers, we said early how critical they are. Mm -hmm. One of the mistakes people make often is when you've turned your wipers on, they've been going back and forth for a period of time. You get to wherever you're going, you just turn your car off, oh, which yeah. leaves the windshield wipers maybe in an up position. Mm -hmm. Let's say you do that at night, right. and then temperatures drop in the night. That wiper freezes to your windshield. Right. So when you come in in the morning and turn your car on, it's going to try to move. It's going it? to try to move, and it's not going to, and it's going to affect your wipers. You know, that, that wiper is just a bolt and a nut. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, that motor's going to turn, and something's going to give. Right. And, and it's, 
so your wiper is going to be messed up. Exactly. So turn the knob off, turn the wipers into the off position, so the next morning when, or next whenever you turn your car on again, they're still in the off position. Mm -hmm. And then you can unstick them and things of that nature, but you don't damage your windshield wipers. By the same token, I would assume if you come out and you've forgotten to do that and it is frozen to the windshield, before you start the car, you need to turn it off, right? Uh, but, well, I, no, because I think uh, they're still going to be in the on position. Oh, okay. You're going to have to unstick it from the window. I see, okay. You know, which is usually pretty easy. You just yeah. pull it a little bit and it'll pop loose. Um, and, and then turn it off. Yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's those little things that you don't think about till you get out in the car in the morning, turn it on, and yeah, why'd I do that? I, 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 I knew better. Why'd I do that? Exactly, exactly. You, you know, and I've, uh, another thing I've noticed that happens sometimes, if it's been raining and it, then it freezes, turns to ice, sometimes you can't get in your door mm -hmm. because, uh, uh, because of uh, it's, it's frozen overnight. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not sure what you do about that there. Well, you know, there's a couple things. Obviously, uh, the one thing you don't want to do is pour hot, you know, even let's say your windshield. You never want to pour hot water on, mm -hmm. on something that's frozen. Right. Uh, because just the damage. Now, your locking mechanism mm -hmm. probably won't be affected as much. But so many cars now have the push button locks. Exactly, and, yeah. You know, I'd be very leery of that. But what I generally do is, if it is, I'll heat up my key somehow. Either oh, with okay. a cigarette lighter, or you know, and then and then let it unfreeze the locking mechanism. Right. Um, hair dryers. Hair dryers. You know, yeah. especially most people now have the key fob uh -huh. that you know they don't even stick a key in the ignition right, exactly. in, or in the right. door anymore. They hit the key fob and then they go to pull the door open and it's frozen on the frame. Uh huh. Yeah, so then you could do one of two things. You may have just busted your door lock by thinking the door is going to open. Yeah. You lift up on the lever real fast and boom, mm -hmm. you've broken it. So again, that's where you may come out with the hair dryer and, mm -hmm. you know, blow the, uh, try to blow the, the ice on the frame. Right. To where it'll loosen up to where you can open the door. Right. Um, you know, like I say, winter driving is definitely different from the summer. And, uh, you know, the worst thing, we've probably all been in a hurry to go go somewhere. We run out in the morning, mm -hmm. we get that car turned on, but we can't get the door open. Yeah. You know, or we can't turn the car on. Or we turn the car on and the windows are just so frosted that mm -hmm. it takes you 10 minutes. And, and then what do you do? You run back in, get your next cup of coffee, leave your car running in your driveway, which technically is wrong. You're not yeah. supposed to leave an unattended vehicle running. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so there's a lot of questions that get posed to you. Uh, you know, one of the needed, one of the important, or rather, the keys to what you just said is the weather's pretty nice right now. It's going to be a whole lot easier for you to go cover all these bases mm -hmm. and take care of those things right now yeah. than it is when winter hits. I've, I've seen people even take pieces of cardboard, and at the end of the evening, they put the cardboard on their windshield. Uh -huh. They turn their wipers to the up position. They come out in the morning. All they got to do is pull that cardboard off. Turn the car on and go. Exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, you can take some precautions to make this winter driving uh, much more easy to navigate. Yeah, and just think about what you're doing, folks. For exactly. All right. Chief, thanks so much for coming by today. Thank we you. Appreciate thanks it for having much. me. Good, good information, folks. We'll be right back in just a moment with more living after these messages. It is said that the eyes are the windows to the soul, and the Eye Care Center wants to make your eyes the best windows possible. The professionals at the Eye Care Center have been offering comprehensive eye care for over 30 years, from eye examinations to eye surgery. From children to seniors, we have the services you need. We pride ourselves on taking the time to fully understand our patients' wants and needs. Each patient is a unique situation and deserves our full attention and the latest treatment options. So call or stop by one of our four convenient locations and start seeing better today. Hello, this is J.D. Oliver from the Smokehouse on Mount Eagle Mountain. Me and my sisters Nancy and Betsy would like to thank you all for your continued support. This year we're celebrating our 50 year anniversary at the Smokehouse. In conjunction with our 50 year celebration, we are bringing music on the mountain every Saturday night, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m., featuring the best of Nashville. We have had some wonderful singers, hit songwriters, and Nashville's rising stars have taken the stage. Come out this Saturday night and every Saturday night through the end of the year. Make it a date night or bring the whole family. Help us celebrate 50 years in the community. 
Music on the Mountain is free every Saturday night at Jim Oliver's Smokehouse. Hey, this is Sean Mayer. I'd like to invite everybody out to the Smokehouse every Saturday night for great music and awesome food. <laughs> Thank you very much, y'all. Some people think that pressing their on-demand button will cost money or make their house explode or something. Of course, neither of these things is true. On-demand is just a way to access thousands of free movies and TV shows. The code to blow up a house is actually channel up, channel down, two star, seven seven. On-demand. Thousands of free movies and TV shows on your schedule. And nothing bad. Welcome back to Just Plain Living. Recently, the drama coach at Tullahoma High School, Aaron Miller, has reinstated the Thespian Society. And he has reinstated Troop 1523, which was active in the 1950s at Tullahoma High School. And they're called the Improviteers, which to me means improvisation. To finance an upcoming trip to New York City, they're presenting Yes, Virginia, December 22nd at THS. The showtime is 2 o'clock and 7 p.m. And they have generated this video that I know you're going to enjoy. Let's watch it now. I'm Lindsay Nix and I'm playing Miriam the Librarian. She's like the narrator of the play. She helps keep it moving along and she's just um, a nice little old lady character who's really excited about Santa Claus. My name is Adam Stevens and I will be playing the part of the Scraggly Santa. The Scraggly Santa is the contradiction to Mr. Church who is the downer antagonist of the play. Instead, my part is that I'm more upbeat and helpful. Well, I believe that Santa is kind of like in us, just you know by the way we act during Christmas time, how we all try to be nice to each other. Whenever you don't believe in Santa, he stops coming. I believe in the spirit of Santa, and I believe that Christmas is a holiday that brings people together to give. I believe basically everything about Christmas that I've been told. I love it. It's the by far the best holiday ever. Okay, my name is Peyton Bennett. I'm playing Mr. Church in Yes, Virginia. And Mr. Church, he's kind of the Scrooge of the show. He's a grumpy old man. My name is Alan Inslee. I'm playing Charlotte. And she's just the really br bratty, snotty, rich kid that picks on Virginia. My name is Christina Francescini. I play as Mrs. Whiskers. I follow around Charlotte and be snooty along with her. I believe Christmas is a time for miracles. You know, anything could happen. I believe in bringing the family together and enjoying everything in life. Well, I believe Christmas is, well, in my house, it's a it's a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but also it's a time for family to gather around and, and appreciate each other and, and the time that we're allowed to have with each other. To have, it, to have fun, Christmas cheer. The THS Improviteers is proud to present their first ever musical production as the Theater Honor Society of Tullahoma High School. This musical features over 15 original songs, colorful characters, and a few dancing pigeons, along with so many Santas you'll probably lose count. It's a wonderful Christmas show packed with all kinds of Christmas spirit. It's based on the actual events surrounding the touching letter that Virginia O'Hanlon wrote to the Sun newspaper in 1897 
asking if there really was a Santa Claus. We invite you to bring the whole family out on December 22nd at 2 p.m. or 7 p.m. to be a part of our celebration of believing no matter what. Tickets are only $5 for either show, and they're on sale now at the front office of the Tullahoma High School or via the Theater Arts Hotline at 931-954-2318. to encourage you to get tickets to this wonderful production. These young people are trying to raise enough money to go to New York City and do a lot of things that have to do with the theater. So remember, it's December 22nd at 2 p.m. in the afternoon and 7 o'clock at night, and it's that wonderful story of, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. So I would encourage you to go. We must compliment the Thespian Society at our high school and Mr. Aaron Miller for the wonderful work he's doing with these students. I think they are adding a lot to the program at Tullahoma High School. Thank you. We'll be right back. On Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. It is the ultimate gift, our Savior. We wish that everybody would have a blessed day and enjoy His love and peace. Yep. We thank you for your continued support and Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and God bless. Up, and they saw a star. It's nice to see familiar faces while enjoying great Sears low prices at your locally owned and operated Sears hometown store in Tullahoma and Shelbyville. Mike and his crew are a premier dealer where you'll find great Sears quality and availability at the lowest prices guaranteed. Featuring Craftsman tools with Sears famous lifetime warranty, Craftsman lawn and garden equipment, 10 major appliance brands featuring Kenmore, Electrolux and Whirlpool, Sealy Bedding, Kenmore and Dyson Vacuums, Nordic Track and Soul Fitness Equipment. And if it's not on our shelves, it's available online at Sears.com with free shipping to either location. Sears Hometown Store in Tullahoma and Shelbyville. We're right in your neighborhood. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom. Adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. folks we're back and when I was young as a lot of us uh, in school you were given a little plastic flute and it was called a flutophone and you were taught how to play the flutophone and it was all kinds of fun well the real name for that instrument is a recorder and I didn't realize how serious it was there's a group uh, the Southern Middle Tennessee Recorder Society that operates out of the First Christian Church and the other night during Old Town Christmas st Stroll there was a recorder concert there and it was absolutely beautiful we're gonna bring you some of that right now <laughs>
This is Eli Manning on behalf of the American Red Cross. You can help the victims of thousands of disasters across the country each year. Disasters like the recent hurricanes. Please make a financial gift to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. This fund enables the Red Cross to provide shelter, food, counseling, and other assistance to the victims of disasters. To make a contribution, call 1-800-RED-CROSS or visit redcross.org. Thank you for your support. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. for things other people get right away just doesn't make much sense. Get high-speed charter internet and enjoy downloads way faster than DSL. Alright folks, we're back. We've heard we're some good back. music today, haven't we? We've heard some beautiful, I love that recorder group. They did a wonderful job. That does, was part uh, of the Old Town Stroll. Does Vicky direct that, or who directs that? Vicky, Vicky pretty much uh, got it together and got started with. That's Vicky Collinsworth, and uh, she and Kyle Copeland, and and added a few more, and then and I see Chris John, Gregory sitting there. John Seeley, who plays the one that he plays the big one that looks more like an oboe. Yeah, it's wonderful. And, I, I love uh, that music. It just and it's some folks. Chris, I think uh, I, I don't know when Chris started. But uh, just people that love that yeah, sound, yeah, like that and sound that and that kind of music. Renaissance sound, it's, I love that. Yeah. yeah, and it and it is sort of a holiday sound. It kind of makes you think of old time, like the old Scrooge movies. Yeah, and, and it was nice to hear stuff the organ. in England. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was nice to hear the organ over yeah. at uh, Saint Barnabas. That was that so. was nice. Yeah, you know, we're kind of getting we kind of got into this Christmassy spirit a little bit, and we have more to bring you on that uh, on that next week as well, and throughout the week. Uh, we have all kinds of look at the schedule for the Christmas concerts and the Christmas parades and all the oh, stuff so that's on Channel things. 6. And we're, we're so happy to bring that to you. And uh, we appreciate you for watching and being there with us and for us. And, and it's going to be Christmas this time next week, isn't it? Yeah, this will be Christmas Day. Yeah. Whoa, it's yeah. coming around fast. And right. we'll, be doing, we'll be doing a show. We will. That's right. We will. <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we wish Christmas. you a Merry Christmas. I remember one year uh, when it was, and this is when we did the show live on Thursday morning, and Christmas morning was uh, Thursday morning, and we filmed it, I think, on Wednesday morning. Mm-hmm. And I had on a pair of pajamas and house shoes with with, with wrapping paper stuck to me and a yeah. bath robe, like we just yeah. like we just a, come maybe, in, you know. Maybe Santa will drop in. Do you think he might? I don't know. We might. We might see if we nice ground if Santa, Santa up. Nothing in. else we can find. Skinny Santa. By there then, by then it'll be too late to be good. If you hadn't been good by then, it's over. I do hope people will go see Yes Virginia and help those kids at the high school raise money for their trip to New York on the twenty second. Don't forget. Yeah. And don't forget the nativity that's going to be at First Baptist, Baptist Church. That's this week. And uh, get your hams and your turkeys. And where you All get that stuff you <laughs> need to have that big old Christmas Are dinner. You and John, you, you, you and Fran remember to remove all the stuff from Are inside the home? turkey before you. Yeah. <laughs> so. Are you going to be home for Christmas? I'll be, be home, home for Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> what we're going to do right now, I guess, is is to where they won't have to be subject to any more of that. <laughs> yeah, right. Unless you want to give them a little bit New York, New York for no, that's bum, really not bum, Christmas. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> Sang that two thousand times in my life. There you go. But and I still it. like it. And a good job. Of it. Frank <laughs> yeah, would be proud of it. Would, yeah. What we'll do right now, folks, is wish you a good day, and uh, we're going to take it out with a little bit more holiday uh, music, Christmas music. And we'll see you next week, and we appreciate you very much. And 
let's all wave goodbye. There we go.